What's up guys, this is Nock V. In this video, we're gonna be doing the intro and breakdown for the previous track I've been working on. You may or may not notice that I sound a little bit weird. I've had a cold for the last two or so days, so I might sound a little nasally and congested. Another thing you might notice is that this track has had a lot done to it since the last time I've shown it to you guys. Now that was not my intention. I severely messed up when I was recording this video last time and I just completely didn't even start the recording. So yeah, I lost it all. So this has forced me to do videos in a way I don't usually do them. What I'm going to do is kind of go over each element of the track that I had worked on in the order that I put them in there and kind of describe them as best as I can. If this format is, in your opinion, better than what I usually do, please let me know in the comments because I might end up just doing this normally. So the first thing I want to make note of is that this lead synth line has been bounced out to a WAV file, so there should be no issues with CPU in this video at all. Thank God. Now I also had to bounce the audio down for this pad line here with phase plant. That was because phase plant was eating up way too much CPU, so I had to do it again. Let me turn on phase plant so we can uh, hear these pads naturally and see how much CPU they really do consume. Now you can really see that the CPU spikes up pretty high and there were a couple of underruns, so I, I really don't want to deal with that again. So we're just going to bounce this down. Now, FL Studio does have its own consolidation feature. I don't particularly like using that because of how little control it kind of gives you. The technique that I use is something that Mito Mara showed me, and it involves using Edison as an effect. So you can record the effects channel independently of the playlist. This allows you to pick exactly where in the effects chain you're recording and what effects you want to keep as live and tweakable when playing the bounce signal back. So what you saw me do just then was copy the pads to an unused area of the playlist at the end, so I can isolate the pads. Then I'm adding Edison onto the effects channel, so then I can hit record in Edison and then play back the pads and have Edison record it. Now, even though there was a ton of underruns, Edison has recorded that without any of the underruns. Cool, cool, cool. Now, all we have to do is hit this button here, and we should see it in the playlist. There it is. Now, if I chop this sound clip up at the end of each of the bars, I can create these uh, seamless loop clips. So if you listen to this bit here, these two clips loop seamlessly together. Now this is the very same audio clip that I'm using in the breakdown that leads up to the uh, synth drop. The next part that I added was just the sine wave using 3 oscillator to add some, some sub frequencies to those pads. Which just sounds like this. Nothing special. The next part was just adding a basic kick and snare pattern. Then I added a little trap style rolling hi-hat pattern. To get that weird pitch changing effect, I changed each of the individual notes pitch values, which you can see kind of at the bottom of the piano roll pane down here. So that all starts to sound a bit like this. So then I added the same bell pattern that I used before. Then add a crash. And some effects. Then I added these kind of LFOE chords. You don't really hear these that much in the final sound. And 
Then I looked for some vocals on Splice that match the key of this track that I'm working in. Now you might notice this little clip here. This is a reverse reverb. It's a pretty cool effect that leads into the main synth line. Let's have a listen to it. The way this is made is kind of similar to the way we bounce down audio. We place the synth down at the end of the track and then record it with Edison. Now we take that audio and we copy it into the playlist. Now let's take the audio and throw it onto its own effects channel. Then put on some Valhalla Room or any kind of reverb and really crank up the decay. Now we don't have to have any of the dry signal mixed back into it, we're only interested in the wet signal. The next thing you want to do is reverse this whole audio clip. Now we can put Edison on this again and then record that section. We don't need to record the entire audio clip, we're just interested in the tail of the reverb. That sounds pretty sweet. Now let's uh, pull that out into the playlist again. Now let's just reverse it again. And all we need to do then is just uh, cut off the end of that and just have the, re the reverse reverb tail. And that is all we need to use for our lead in. And that's it. Now moving on to the intro. For uh, DJ friendly tracks, what I start off with these days is two sets of eight bars of kicks. Then I'll layer that up with some ride cymbals, some crashes on the start of each phase. Then I'll leave two bars open here for some room for a reverse symbol that leads into the breakdown. Then I'll add a fill sample on the very last bar of each phase. Then I added a down sweep and a riser. And the same snare rolling pattern that we used in the uh, build up as well. Then I've also added the very first bar of the bell pattern. Pretty much on alternating bars starting with the very first bar of the track. Then I have a kind of cool percussion loop. Then I also have the very first bar of the bass line playing throughout the intro of the track. However, during the intro, a very aggressive EQ has been added to kind of band pass the, the whole bass line. So let's have a listen to how that sounds.
And that's pretty much the intro. So now let's have a listen to the progress we've made on the track as a whole now. So there it is. I want to take this opportunity to say that none of what I have here can be considered final. This is still a very rough start to the track and there will definitely be a lot of tweaking and stuff before this track gets anywhere close to release. I'll probably be doing that stuff after the next couple of videos which will be about the second breakdown and then the second drop. As always, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. If you want to support me and the stuff that I do, check out the Patreon link in the description. I also have a Discord as well, so if you want to hang out and talk music, check out the invite link in the description too. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.